What is up, my peeps? Joshua Smith here with another GSD Mode podcast interview. First off, thank you so much for tuning in, for checking out the show. Um, your support is massively, massively appreciated. The only reason that this show exists is because of all of your amazing support. So we truly appreciate your support. I truly appreciate your support. Make sure that you're sharing the show with as many people that you feel would benefit from the show. The goal is to always grow this show and go out there and have a big impact. Real quick though, before we jump into today's podcast, I want to plug our sponsors that make all of this possible. Our first sponsor is my personal 90-day mastery boot camp. This is my real estate agent mentorship training program. Um, It's a group training platform. This way it makes it extremely affordable for you. Inside this program, however, um, I am unpacking my entire playbook. I'm walking you through step-by-step everything that I do inside my real estate business, everything that I've done, everything I've learned um, in my 12 plus year career with selling over 5,000 homes, selling over a billion dollars in real estate. Um, And I walk you through step-by-step exactly what I've done, how I've built what I've built, um, and what I'm doing today to go out there and create the success. But don't mistake the low cost um, for low value. This is an insanely in-depth, step-by-step program um, where I'm walking you through, again, step-by-step on how I go out there. My team sells one to two homes every single day in today's market, continue to grow my business year after year, and how I've been able to exit from selling, exit from actually day-to-day involvement in my real estate team and create an epic, amazing real estate team that not only sustains but grows without my involvement. So whatever level that you're at, whether you're a brand new real estate agent, Agent, you're an a individual high producing agent that wants to expand and create a team, or if you already have an amazing team or your broker owner that's looking to step up your internal training, looking to step up your systems, your processes, your tracking, make your business more predictable, this program is absolutely for anybody that's serious about leveling up inside their business. So check us out, www.90daymastery.com. Uh, make sure you use promo code Live Mastery, all one word, all together, all caps. That's going to get you the biggest discount on 90mastery.com. You're going to see tons of testimonials on their video testimonials, what's included in the program, the future dates of the program. I do several of these every single year, so make sure to check us out and make sure to jump inside that program ASAP. Uh, my next uh, uh, next sponsor that makes this uh, uh, show possible is PerfectStormNow.com. If you're a real estate agent and you are looking for a lead generation machine website, backed by an insanely powerful CRM system that allows you to convert your leads to appointments at the highest possible level, manage all your tasks, make sure that you're effective and efficient as you possibly can be inside your business, transaction management component, all of that stuff. It is hands down by far the most effective and affordable real estate website and CRM program that exists out there in the industry. It's what I use to go out there and sell 650 plus homes every single year and the system is gnarly. If you're signing up for that program, Make sure to use promo code MASTERY, P-S-N, all caps, all one word, all together. That'll save you the $200 registration fee and get you a great discount. Um, our last sponsor is REO University. So I teamed up with a good buddy of mine who is the most knowledgeable dude, hands down, that I've ever met when it comes to REO properties. This guy used to work for the, the banks directly as an asset manager, um, and uh, he developed so many of the systems that you see that asset managers and asset management firms and banks use today. Um, This guy sold over 11,000 properties, foreclosure properties as an asset manager. And he and I teamed up um, with my experience of of working with over 35 banks in my career, selling thousands of REOs, plus his experience. We've created uh, uh, just an insane program. Again, um, REO University, the website is www.reo.com. R-E-O Mastery University. Um, it's a one-time payment for $9.97 or you can split that up into three monthly payments. Uh, this is not a live boot camp like my 90 Mastery Boot Camp. This is something that you have access to instantaneously. We we'll walk you through exactly how to go out there and get in with the banks. Um, so how to get the business, but then how to service that business at the highest level. Um, how to go out there and complete BPOs. How to complete cash for keys. How to how to make sure that you're insane at your valuations. How to go out there and, and uh, make sure that 
your asset managers are winning and hitting their goals, key indicators you need to look for, and more. There's 22 in-depth, um, just amazing, powerful modules that will teach you how to become an REO machine inside your real estate business. Now, if you're like me, I don't want my business to ever be in a vulnerable position, right? I don't care if it's a good market, bad market. It doesn't mean that my business needs to be good or bad. My business can always be great during a market crash, right? There's no such thing as if the market's going to crash. It's just a matter of when, right? But again, you don't need to put yourself in a vulnerable position. You can make sure that your real estate business is 100% recession proof um, and go out there and of course, generate business, do a ton of business regardless of what's happening in the marketplace. And this is exactly how you go out there and do it. And we walk you through step by step. So check us out, reomasteryuniversity.com. You can learn more about the program, hopefully register for the program, jump on in. Um, this price will not last long, right? We just created this product, rolled it out uh, uh, several months ago, and uh, just getting in the hands of the consumer, and people are having a lot of amazing success. So again, check us out, reomasteryuniversity.com. All right, again, you guys, thank you so much for watching this show. Thank you so much for tuning in. Make sure to share the show. Make sure to comment, uh, um, um, you know, like us on YouTube, leave some positive comments. We love hearing back from you guys um, and love getting your feedback. Keep kicking ass, and let's jump on in to today's interview. What is up, my peeps? Joshua Smith here with another GSD mode interview where every single week we interview top entrepreneurs, top real estate agents, and just straight up top badass that they're dominating their space. People choosing to not live a life of mediocrity, but instead to go out there and create big, amazing, epic lives for themselves, for their families, as well as have a big impact on others. And today, you guys, we got a special guest on the show. I'm a dude that I recently met, became uh, good friends with him, and this dude is a rock star. A Michigan guy. <laughs> yep, uh, yep, a fellow Michigander. Uh, um, but this is a dude that, um, you know, was experiencing dark moments in his life, right? Wasn't successful on a financial level, um, was struggling with, with alcoholism, and just, just kind of hit this point where he decided to pivot, create a new life, and, and overcame it all, man. Went out there and now has created one of the top, most successful real estate teams and real estate businesses on the planet. 2017 was the number one REMAX agent in the state of, of Michigan. There were $95 million in gross volume sales. Um, and one thing that blew my mind. So our guest and I, um, we were in LA at an event together. And he's talking about his online lead conversion ratio. And I'm like, Zillow specific. Yeah, Z Zillow specific. Yeah. And I'm like, dude, you're full. Of, like in my head, I didn't necessarily say this. Uh, I know, I know. I, I, I'm like, you're full of shit, bro. Like, there's no way, <laughs> right? And I, I hear these things all the time. Black, how'd this guy get here? Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> so then, you know, because most real estate agents will spit out numbers, but they don't really track their numbers at a deep level, no, right? And and our guest man, he pulls up his 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 numbers, all this matrix, right? And and the proof was there, and I was blown away and. I'm like, dude, I got to get you on this podcast. So, so stoked and honored to have my good friend, John Wentworth on the show. The show, my friend. What up guys? What up? Thank you for having me, man. I certainly appreciate it. I got to tell you when, when you spoke, um, you know, at that event in LA, I was just like, wow, I could really relate to, I didn't know you're from Michigan, but I could really relate to everything you were saying. You know, so many people can stand up there and talk about about numbers and talk about all the shit they sold. And to me, I, you know, I'm always about well, who is the person, right? Who's the person. And, you know, when you share things about your family and about your wife, that's what drew me to you, I guess maybe sounds a little odd, but truly, you know, and so I'm, I'm happy to be on. I'm stoked and uh, let's rock it. Yeah. I appreciate it, man. So let's be, before we get into it, cause again, you're doing so many epic things now. Let, let's go back to that, that decision that led to you getting into real estate and to go out there and, and, and change your life, right? And go out there and take yeah. this to the next level. What was going on internally and, and led to that pivot that really led you to creating all the success that you have now? I mean, I've just always been someone that follows my passion, right? So I played um, semi-pro hockey for like three weeks. Then I got cut. Um, I was a triple backup goalie, but it was a lot. It was a great experience. But, but going back to that, I was very passionate about that. Um, when I was a senior in high school, I went to the racetrack, standard red horses. I'm like, that's what I want to do. Screw hockey. And uh, so that's what I did. I, a week later, I was cleaning stalls. And next thing you know, I was training horses. And then the next thing after that, you know, I was, I mean, I ended up being one of the leading drivers and trainers in North America. Um, and and, and it's just, I just know that when you're passionate about something, you bring something different to the table each day, right? And so, so from there, I ended up living in Ottawa, Ontario. 
and I love being in Ottawa, but I had a son at home. And, you know, when I first went, he was four. When I went the second time, because I would come home for four months, go back for eight. They don't race there in the winter. It's too cold. Um, but I just, I mean, I got to a point where I'd lay in bed at night and cry. Just want to be home. And then, so I started, instead of going home once a month, I'd, go, I'd start going every week, which is a 10-hour drive. I'd leave Sunday night after the races. I'd return Thursday in time for the races. And that lasted a few times. And I'm like, I got to quit this. And on the way home, I just, uh, I call my, my partner at the time. I said, bro, I'm done. And he's like, nope. I thought he was going to be pissed, right? He's like, no problem. I got you. Don't worry about it. Sell all the shit and we'll, we'll do something different. And it transitioned into flipping houses. Well, I still do not own a screwdriver. I'm the last person that, I mean, if I need something done, it's just, can you mow my lawn? Can you fix this? Can you fix that? I don't, I don't, I don't have any clue how to do any of that shit. And I don't want to do it. Um, but in that, in that transition of, of starting to flip houses, the market started to tank. And so our last home, we had a very difficult time selling. And through that, I just always felt like, you know, you, you know, you hire different realtors and like, no, I know I could do this. And I think there's a lot of, there's a lot missing from a marketing standpoint. I've always been into marketing. Uh, I don't know why. I just, I, I'm, I'm always into that mindset of, of marketing. And so, you know, um, in, as the crash occurred, I got my real estate license. And I think that was a blessing at that time because, you, ha you know, I, I went to this brokerage and people were sitting there waiting for the phone to ring because that's what had happened. And that wasn't happening now. And I didn't know any different. So, you know, I'm knocking on doors. I'm going up to people while they're mowing their lawn and just slowly building that business. But to get to your point of the, that shift, um, I was in real estate, but I was meandering. You know, I was still playing hockey um, and I was drinking too much, way too much. Um, and I played in a hockey tournament that uh, was up north, which you know what, means, what that means in Michigan, you know, a four hour trip north at, in Traverse City, actually. And I got so drunk the night before that the next morning, I mean, I woke up, I didn't know where my shoes were. Um, I had no idea where I, where I was. And the game was like, like a half hour. Well, being the goalie, I'm usually there an hour early. So literally, I, my buddies picked me up. I'm in the back of their truck getting dressed on the way there. Long story short, the next day, I'm back at home in Michigan, at my house with my girlfriend, hungover, and on ESPN is a story about this gentleman named Todd Crandall. And you can Google him now, Racing for Recovery. He's right in Ohio. And his story was my story, right? So I'm watching this. He's a goalie in hockey. His mom committed suicide. He ended up addicted to, to drugs and alcohol and whatever else you can imagine, shit that I never did, praise the Lord. Um, but it just broke me down, and I was just bawling. And uh, – I, <clears throat> I sent him an email. I didn't even freaking know how to email hardly at this time. You know, I go on, I Google the guy, I figure it out, and I email him. And about 20 minutes later, I get a phone call. And it's 419 area code. And, uh, you know, that moment, that was it. I mean, it changed my life. He said, hey, it's Todd Crandall. Uh, I mean, the guy was just on ESPN, right? So you know what kind of person this is, right? And uh, I drove down the next day met with him, went through a class. He does a class and I drove down for that. And uh, I didn't drink for eight years. Uh, and that realigned me, right? I mean, that, that refocused me and, uh, and it shifted my mindset. So now I was done with hockey and dove back into real estate and, and, met, and, and just started going hard and hard and hard and hard and trying to build something out of nothing. And, you know, here we are. <laughs> now nah, I love it, man. You know, and, and, and what I love about like when our guests go deep into those stories is it's so easy to see a dude like you and the success that you're creating. Cause I'm, I'm sure you did it. I know I did it. You know, these mega producers and I'd put them on these pedestals and be like, they're like, they're like have a different genetic code. They're like these <laughs> superhuman. feel like I couldn't relate. But then as you go through this journey, you start becoming a top producer, hang out, you start producing like, man, you know, they, they didn't start from a better position. A lot of times they're even a worse position and they're no different. Like you and I are no different than anybody else. Right? Right. We, do, we just commit and we're consistent and, and work our asses off. And so I, man, I love just you being honest and transparent about that. Cause I oh, think yeah. it allows yeah. all of us to be relatable of, uh, cause we all go, we all have different levels, but we all go through our shit in life. We all, right? We've all got shit. I mean, I think that's what makes me compassionate about people. I mean, the shit that I've endured and hopefully no one ever has to. Um, but but it makes me ultra compassionate for 
people and, and, and everybody, all walks of life. Uh, you know, I'm a big hugger. I hug everyone. When I come into the office, 28 people I hug every single day after I set my, sh- my shit down. But, um, and I, and I, I'm that way in the community, and it's just natural because I'm very compassionate to the fact that everybody has shit in their lives, right? Yeah. And I call what you're referring to the finished product syndrome, right? People see somebody on a billboard, and they're like, oh, yeah, but they don't think about everything that it took to get there. And I think that's the beauty of when we start to, to you know, interact with, with high-level people. They really all end up being very similar. Yeah. So, I, so, so Ty Coles, yeah, right. This is kind of that like defining moment of like, dude, all right, man, I'm going to, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to shift these things around. I'm going to make the necessary yeah. changes that I got to make to go out and create a successful life. Um, you go down there, you meet with them, but you talk about at that moment, you gave up hockey and you decided to just become chips all in and obsessed with real estate. And, you know, you talked earlier too about um, your, your passions. And I think that there's a difference. A lot of people can be passionate about something, you know, but it, to create success, it's, I think it's a little bit deep. It's, it's like an obsession and, and oh, no doubt. The right things, not the success that it creates, but being obsessed with the processes that it takes to create that success. And like, like totally. at, at that moment, talk to us about like what you started doing and obsessing with, because we're talking not a long time either that you went out there and created this mega yeah. 28 person team, just absolutely murdering it. And I think I've been licensed since nine years, if, I, if I'm correct. But um, I just, you know, I, I, I was in a place where you, you didn't really get leads. I mean, you answered the phone when the phone rang. And so if, if something trickled in, great. Um, but I just became obsessed in that market. That was when the foreclosure height was at, you know, at the highest level. And, you know, I mean, Flint, Michigan, you can speak to that all day long. You know, we're, we're between Flint and Detroit. Um, and, and we are, uh, I mean, auto, 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 you know, it used to be auto capital of the world. So it was devastated here. Um, I just became obsessed with buyers because I felt like I'm not going to spend, spin my wheels trying to get a listing that can't sell anyway. So I'm just going to focus on buyers. And, you know, I, I ended up getting a board, a marker board up on my wall. And my goal was just to keep that sucker full. And, and, and I didn't have any lead sources. I mean, once in a while you need a real uh, lead from realtor.com. But again, I didn't have any money. Guys, I was literally, when I quit drinking, I had no money at all. I was living in a place that I was paying 800 bucks in rent. And I had a dude living in the bottom to help pay for that, right? Um, and, and, and that was okay because in horse racing, you live broke anyway. I live broke anyway, even though we, we did so well. I mean, we crushed it. We batted about 400, 400. It's like a batting average. We batted about 400. We won a lot of races. Just wasn't a lot of money in it. But um, you know, I literally had no money. And I would, so I would just dive on, on buyers. I'd go after buyers any way I could get them. The phone rang um, at the store, wearing my little silly name tag. I mean, anything that I could do to, rec- to get someone to recognize uh, that I was selling real estate. And I did realize early that I was good at it. I mean, I had a knack for, you know, I, I, I believe like all those things that I went through in my life led me up to being able to deal with what occurred last Monday, right? With the 48 hour notice, um, because it didn't affect me at all. I'm in my mind, I was like, okay, that's great. Get out of the way now and let me go. And that's kind of how I was in this moment. Um, but I think one of the things that really shifted it to was when I met my wife, um, because she did something that really, 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 really motivated me. And it did more than motivate me. It supported me. It said, I've got your back similar to what just occurred last week. And, uh, you know, I met my wife on Match.com, believe it or not, because here I am sober, and I'm like, well, how the hell am I going to start dating? I can't go to Mo Doggies at midnight, yeah. right? So, so I go on Match.com. The only person I ever talked to uh, was my wife. Our first date was the night of a hockey game that I got cut from. We went back to the game when Darren McCarty came back. Um, but uh, I was at another brokerage, and I had like eight pending deals, but I had no money at all. And I went to my broker and I said, uh, I need, I need to borrow five grand. And I knew the guy, he was there every day. He was, he was selling and he was around and, uh, he goes, well, I'll give you 2,500. I said, well, that's awesome. But I need five grand. Like, I don't need 25. I'm behind. Right. I need five grand. I've got eight pending. You're getting the money anyway. He said, I'll give you 2,500 because that'll keep you motivated. And I said, well, I have more pending than you do. I don't need to be motivated. He wouldn't give me the money. Long story short, um, that night I go meet my wife at the mall for dinner and, uh, and she is hearing the story, right? Because we're communicating. And when I see her, I walk up and I give her a hug 
And my wife always does this. When she shakes someone's hand, she turns her left hand over and holds her hand. I don't know why. It's just what she does. So she does that to me. And inside of it is a piece of paper. And I open it up. It's a check for $5,000. And uh, I think when you motivate somebody, that's one thing. When you provide them support with, without an expectation, that does something else to somebody. You know, and I kind of feel like that's part of what's, what's going on with our team right now is that everybody has each other's back so much that it becomes way more than the money. And, uh, and that moment really was like, wow, okay, this, this is probably going to go somewhere from a relationship level, but it also motivated me in a different way. It was beyond motivation. It was obsession, maybe, as you talk about, right? And so I just kept going and, you know, kept filling the board with buyers and buyers and buyers and buyers and buyers and buyers. And, buyers. and I was very loyal to one lender. I was very loyal to every, every I've always been very loyal to everything that I do. Um, and, and I think that this goes back to that finished product syndrome. You can't just become a big mega agent by spending a bunch of money. You've got to have the integrity to back it long term, right? I mean, the market's hot right now. Anybody can enter the market and sell something. But can you do it and, and, you know, and sustain it long term? And I think, you know, no matter how good you are, if you don't lead with your heart and you don't lead with integrity, you're going to fall off at some point. And we've all seen those people in our marketplace, right? Yeah. Yeah. Love it. I see you see you're, you're continuing the path, man. I mean, you're, you're motivated and driven. I love that you've never been before. Um, you're just racking and sober up, and sober racking up with all these, these buyer clients. And I, I mean, I'm assuming very quickly you got out of capacity, um, in which then yeah. probably led to, to your team growth. I mean, at what point mm -hmm. did you start your real estate team? So, and, and I love that you asked me that question because I think right now people are starting teams when they, they have no, they have no reason to be, you know, I see it everywhere where because it's cool and it's a fad, I'm going to start a team. And the truth is, if you don't have enough business that you cannot control, like if, I mean, if you reach a point where business is literally slipping through your fingers, then you should look at that. Until then, I think it's, it's bats backwards the way they're doing it. So I hired an assistant. She's still with me today. She was the first one that I hired. Her name is Stacy. Love you, Stacy. If you're seeing or listening, but you know, I paid her 200 bucks a week cash. I mean, we sat in the same office asses to elbows and we just did it. We just worked, you know, and she had zero real estate experience and I didn't have much either. And we just have grown together. And, you know, I remember one day she said to me, do you think I'll have a job next year? And I said, heck yeah, you will. I had no clue. Right. I mean, I knew she would, but I didn't know what it was going to unfold to. And the funny thing is after all this stuff went down, you know, with, with uh, Remax last week, she texted me just, just being cute. She said, do you think I'll have a job next week? <laughs> so that was cute. But, um, yeah, I think that uh, one assistant, that allowed me to do more business. Now we started shifting to listings a little bit because the market was turning, right? And this is where the marketing came in. Um, and then busy, 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 second assistant. And so for the, you know, for the people listening that are thinking about building teams, like it's two assistants before it's two buyer's agents. And I guess there's all different versions of this. Don't get me wrong. Like if somebody really isn't, you know, necessarily outselling, well then, but you're producing the leads and all of that, then you need people to service it. But for me, I knew how important the listings were, right? I knew that, that the listing, um, the listings would drive because this is when everybody bought at discount. Well, all those people are going to resell, right? Three to five years. Who are they going to resell with? So I really wanted to establish myself um, as a brand in the selling real estate. And so then we started that shift and started working expires and withdrawals and started, um, I've never been, the funny thing is about the Zillow thing, I never did Zillow until last year. I never really paid for leads. I marketed to get sellers. Sellers produced buyers and, you know, through our open houses and through the phone and, and all of those things. Um, and, and it just started to really start to take off from there. Then I hired uh, a third assistant that was part-time. Then I hired the first buyer's agent. And then we started to slowly add those. And, and what I learned through that was as we brought people in, they were buyer's agents only because I felt I could train them and they could do a very good job right out of the gate, right? Um, and, but it was, it was three years before anybody else listed but myself. Now we have four or five people listing and we're actually training anybody that's been here over a year to list right now. Yeah, yeah, love it. So then, you know, fast forward, kind of give us an idea of what your team structure looks like today. So we're 28 people. Um, I think we're at, we're a little heavy on staff right now. Um, I think we're, we're 12 staff 
Uh, we've got, th so between my, well, the whole team, we did 360 transactions last year. Um, you know, just shy, I think it was like 96.2 million or something. I don't know. Uh, we were, we were at like 110 pending and sold at the end of the year, which was awesome. So we can say that we broke it on it. Right. But, um, but the team structure breakdown is I am still the team lead. I did 103 myself last year, which is absolutely insane. Um, and, and then Todd did 62, Andy did 41, Pat did 40 or 39. So you've got kind of those top three and now we've really started to, and I didn't, I didn't recruit before I turned people away um, because I just didn't feel we were ready, you know? And, and I've always been a big believer too in foundational growth, meaning I don't need to hurry up and do this. I need to do it right. And if I do it right, then it's sustainable. If I hurry up and build it on a deck of cards, then it's going to fall down. And so now finally, I think we're, and I know we are, I mean, we've, you know, I started doing recruiting. Um, I guess we started back in August and just scratching the surface of it. And we've added eight people. So we've had a lot of growth just in the last six months. Um, but we've got, you know, just, I, I'm, I'm a big believer in focus. Like, so our transaction coordinators don't mix buyers and sellers. One transaction coordinator does all the sellers. One does all the buyers and we close those about 50, 50. So it works out very well. Um, we've got a, a gal that handles all of our marketing. We outsource, as you know, um, a lot of the Facebook stuff. Um, we, we, we try to be very, very, um, we, we need the best photos in town, right? I mean, that's one of our value props, drones, Matterport, anything we can do to the specific property that I think we need to do to market it properly is what we do. Um, and we just, uh, you know, I mean, again, it's the team of people that are all working together. And so there's a lot of collaboration amongst each other. Uh, it's a very open environment. And, you know, there's competition in it, but it's friendly competition. And the doors are open to the, the team is very receptive to anyone that joins us. There's not that scarcity mentality of, oh, shit, I'm going to get less. Because I think we've all learned that as the brand grows, everyone gets more. Yeah, love it, dude. So then – when you're talking, because the amount of business that you guys do, and I see a lot of top producers that have went this path, where they, you know, they're bringing in their own photographers, people that do that in-house. As part of that 12 uh, support or staff members, I mean, do you have people like that in-house? Does that include that? We have an, uh, We don't have an in-house photo person because it just didn't make sense financially. I mean, you can outsource them for the same price. Right. Um, but with that, We've, we've vacillated on it because I think you could do a little bit more, but instead what we chose to do was I hired a full-time videographer and that just occurred maybe two months ago. Um, and the idea behind that was, well, first Gary told me to do it. He's like, dude, just do this. You know, we're, we, we had a double full page ad. I wonder if there's one laying here in the local newspaper. It cost me 67,000 a year and we know where paper goes, right? Yep. Um, but it, but this paper was pretty good and it was pretty local. So I think it, it, you know, it helped us definitely as we grew, it helped us, but times change. And I actually took that paper with me to Miami and I showed it to Gary and he said, dude, this is going right in the fucking trash. And so I just reallocated that money. Um, I got a videographer and the beauty of that is, you know, this, all this stuff that I shared with you before we started about what's happened in the last two weeks, it's all on video. Right. Me standing there in front of the team raw with my wife on my arm, sharing with them what's going down is all on video. And so it really gives you an opportunity to tell a story. Um, and we did, we started our podcast, which is a uh, uh, thoroughbredpodcast.com. Um, just done two episodes, but it's, it's been neat to, to watch yours and learn. Uh, uh, was on Jay Pitts last, uh, last week down in Kentucky. I happened to be in Kentucky for a wedding of all things. And uh, so just, just kind of reallocated that money and got into something different. Um, but with the video now we're doing, you know, community videos that are, you know, based on, um, you know, I'm going, you know, you know, everybody in the community, right? So you're going into the local restaurant and you're highlighting their restaurant for them. And, you know, we're getting 15 to 30,000 views on those. I think you saw a piece of one, which are awesome. So it's just, I mean, you gotta always be evolving and always be learning and always be looking to others, um, you know, to, to try to learn and, and, I, I think R and D is important. Then you R and D and you put your spin on. It. Yeah. Well, more you're doing, man. Like you, you showed me that video in LA of one of your new listings, right? And wasn't your mm -hmm. typical <laughs> listing you know, that showcase the property beautifully, but you were like, dude, like people have got to see how epic and big this backyard is. And it's the middle of the winter, right? So it's kind of, <laughs> but you got your video out and you had like you and your team playing a football game, a full-on football game in the backyard and showcase it, which 
showcases off the property well, but also gets people emotionally, you know, attached to you guys right. and you on a higher level. And like your marketing that you're doing isn't just like everybody else is doing. Like you're very intentional no. about, hey, we're gonna sell these properties, but we're also selling, you know, the human connection and being different. You're selling a story, right? And I think the other, you know, the other part of that is, I mean, I, I, I don't know, I came up with this. Pictures are no longer worth a thousand words. You know, they just aren't. I mean, anybody can hire a pro to take a photo now. So it's hard to say, well, we've got the best photo. I mean, we, we take a photographer that we think is the best and we make them exclusive to our zip codes. Yeah. You know, and we pay them a little more to do it. But still, the next person come along and make them just as good. So the video was the next level to, to really start to provide that human connection to these properties. And I think that's important. One of the best ones we did was on an island on Lake Fenton, uh, a little house we listed at the end of the year. And it was just a beautiful day and it was very organic. And uh, I mean, that thing had 10,000 views in two days. Yeah. And we sold it from the Facebook video. The yeah. gal told us at the closing. Yeah. So, I mean, what, what I love yeah. about it too, dude, is like the content that you're creating, at least what I've seen of it is like, I don't even care if, like, I'm not looking to buy a house in Michigan right now. Right. Um, right. But I still wanted to watch the video because it, it was just, it was just intriguing. It was entertaining. You know, it does all these things where you get these eyeballs of people that may not be ready to buy or sell for five years. And they start mm -hmm. wanting to watch your content just because it brings an entertainment level to it as well. Right. Um, and then, over years develops that relationship when they're ready to go, boom, you got yeah. it. Yeah. I mean, I think the biggest thing that we all have to be cognizant of is, you know, our brand is our name um, and we have to, or our company name, whatever that is, right? Um, wh whatever we lead with is our brand. And I think we have to be deliberate and intentional in understanding that branding and marketing are two different things. And we've got to build our brand. And really, I mean, when you look at you know, brands, you know, Century 21, Remax, all those brands, they're being diluted by the big teams unless the teams are still with them, which in many cases now those teams are breaking off. And, uh, and I just think that I, I wouldn't be able to, uh, to do that had we not been building this brand because yep. people show up at our office for a close and they're like, oh, I didn't know you were with Remax. Yep. You know, the general public doesn't doesn't really care anymore. They care about who you are and how you're going to service them. And, and that goes back to what we were talking about be, before the show. You know, I think that I'm not naive enough to think that I'm nobody. You know what I mean? I If I move my company to North Carolina, the market doesn't give a shit about me. And I get that. You know, fortunately, we've built a good brand in our market. Yeah. And I think from there, and that goes back to what I said, that foundational growth. I think you start with that and then you can start to, you can start to grow that. Yeah. Difficult to skip it all over the place though. Yeah. Love it. Couldn't agree more. And, and I know John's mentioned a couple times about, you know, what just happened last 40 hours, which we'll, we'll definitely talk about, but he, he made a big transition, a big move from you know, Remax to, to independent, uh, his own opening, his own brokerage now, which encases a team, which we'll kind of walk through that. Cause he can tell you guys what's good and some of those pains and what he's learned. Yeah. And for anybody making those moves. But, what I want to talk about now, dude, is, is kind of what I talked about in the intro of, um, you know, you're, you, I don't know if I've ever met anybody that has is a high of a conversion ratio on online leads than you have. I mean, okay. you know, like I, I look at, okay, my real estate team, we're not doing Zillow, we're doing Facebook, but like, dude, we're like 1.2%, you know, right? Which is still a 20X gross Which on is, live. You know, yeah, right? that's good for Facebook. Yeah, so <laughs> you're good there, right? Um, but I also love, you said this before we hit the record button, but you were like, look, you know, when people say, oh, the lead sucks, you're like, the lead doesn't suck, dude, you suck. Like your system yeah. sucks. And so yeah. it's not necessarily the, 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 that the Zillow lead is so amazing, right? Um, right? It's the system that you guys have to capture that, to follow up with it, to, um, so first off, I mean, what is your conversion ratio? If I remember correctly, it was something like eight or 9%, just something that's. So, the, so, and I just, from the start of 2017 to the end of 2017, um, pending and sold, we were at 9.02%. And then that same year to date of sold was 7.98%. So basically 8% of sold. And prior to, you know, changing the system and getting deep involved in it, we were dropping Zillow because we were less than 1%. So that's a huge shift. And it just came down to, you know, Todd, who's a great friend of mine, one of our, one of our, uh, uh, teammates and he also has a, a managerial role. He said, uh, we're, I think we're going to drop Zillow. And I was, I, you know, at this time I was kind of removed from it. I'm like, yeah, okay, whatever. We didn't track it. We didn't do anything. And, and by the way, you know, you, you gave me the plug for, for tracking all 
all this stuff. I obviously don't do this. I, this would make my head pop off. Um, but, but when we got involved in coaching and, and for me, I didn't need, I didn't get involved in coaching to learn how to sell. I was selling shit left and right. I needed to learn how to run the business. You know, I mean, I didn't go to college. I'm a, I'm a street smart guy. I'm, I'm an in the moment person. I don't, I always tell people I can sell, but I can't spell. And, and literally I, I'll ask my kid how to spell stuff, but it doesn't matter. Right. Because that's not what sells homes. Um, so, so this little thing, it was really about, Todd said, we're going to dump it. I'm like, yeah, okay, whatever. And then I went to my office and I'm like, we're nobody. Zillow's on the New York Stock Exchange and we're saying they suck, which is what everyone else is saying. And, and, and I just kind of looked at that and I'm like, no, we suck. And so, and this was during the winter, which in Michigan helps, right? No matter what I do in Michigan, folks, it slows down a little bit. Um, and so I just started kind of di dissecting it and diving deeper into it. It and just kind of like I kind of made it my baby and I mean shit, there was leads that I was going through the system leads that were never even called what was your mind but it happens all the time right and so I just created and it was an evolving system I really didn't know how to do it right but I called the Zillow guy back real quick and by the way I've got a great Zillow rep and you need a great Zillow rep it definitely makes a difference right um, I mean he's buddy he's been out here with me now I took him out of the lake um, but that matters on a totally different subject, but just kind of breaking it down to when the, when the first, when the lead first hits, what has to happen? And then next, next, next and just building that system. And, and then I had to babysit it because I couldn't do it myself. So going back to, I call my Zillow rep. I'm like, dude, don't shut us down. Let's work together on this. You and me direct because I had it handed off to somebody else. And this taught me something else is that we need to build those systems ourselves first and, and, and get them as good as we can get them before we go on to the next system. And so that was a good learning uh, tool for me in that. Uh, and that's your listing presentation, that's your Facebook leads, that's everything you do. I think you've got to build it and perfect it the best you can before you can step away from it and hand it off and go on to the next thing. And so I just started dissecting it and uh, started babysitting it. And I, you know, I rallied everybody up. I said, look guys, I, I, need, I need you to try to give me your best effort on this. Um, because what I'm going to do, we're going to up our spend. And they're like, huh, I thought you were canceling it. I go, no, we're going to up it and I'm going to babysit it. And if you don't, and, and so literally now, Josh, I'm, I'm, I'm running with two phones, right? An iPad and a phone, no, two phones. And, uh, one was just the premier agent app. As soon as I got a lead, I knew. So I'll, I'm reverting back to Boomtown. If it wasn't called within two minutes, I, I sent out a Slack. Who can take a lead right now? always somebody, right? Transferred the lead. Condition the agents, like if I don't jump on my leads, I'm not gonna have any. And, and so then that started to get better. That piece started to get better. The other thing that I found inside of that is, who's answering the phone doesn't even have to be great. You just gotta answer the damn thing. I mean, super, super important. So, you know, Zillow phone can ring, obviously. We put it on blast. Whoever answers it first gets it. And then the Zillow leads that come through, we had at that time on a rotation. But if you didn't field it within two minutes, it was moving on to somebody else. And uh, I think that created a, a sense of awareness for people and also a sense of urgency. And from there, it just started to, you know, I don't know how, how we talked about this for three hours, but from there, just started to dissect every single point, kind of like you talked about with your systems, man. Like every single point of the process, how can you dissect it and break it down? And I'll tell you at 9%, we're still leaving money on the table, undoubtedly, undoubtedly, um, based on long-term follow-up. Yep, yep, love it, dude, love it, man. So, and, and you're so right in that. And I get so many people, like everybody thinks leads solves all problems, you know, right? But what you find so often is once they get the leads, the rest of their business funnel just straight up fucking sucks, you know, right? Yeah. So you, you got to build this thing backwards, the foundational first, right? And then, so when those leads come in, you have an effective system to funnel them through, so when you look at this, um, because you and I also had a conversation about ISAs and you're like, look, we tried yes. tomorrow, but then we, you know, we found that if we just gave more agents, um, mm -hmm. uh, we had more success, but it's because you've developed this system and you got the buy-in now from your agents to follow it. And since you said that, man, I've just been racking my head of like, damn, may, maybe this is, you know, I'm contemplating going to your model completely now and still got to jump on an airplane and come see what you're doing and, and all of that. But. Well, well we, went, we went to the ISA for a while and it was successful. The trouble with it is how, how many, I mean, 
because like anything, if the lead source works and you have a 9% conversion, you keep pouring money into it. Well, how many ISAs do I mean, you have a freaking call center? Yep. You know, and, and, we're, and part of our team culture is having, you know, I don't want a call center somewhere else because I want everybody bought into the team, right? I mean, a lot of the staff that are here are a big part of the team. You know, and, and I think that's super important. So I would say you never discount, you know, what bringing the right person in can do, even if they're an ISA. Um, but how many can you hire? And and then the other thing was my agent said to me, you know, we know we got whatever thousand leads last month, but it just didn't feel like it because we only had this many appointments. And so we started, I said, well, let's talk about that, right? Because I, I'll, should I'll create whatever you'll do. <laughs> you know what I mean? It does not have to be my way. It just has to be a way that it'll get done. So let's talk about that. And the agents came up with, and, and we went back and forth on this. That they wanted floor time. And, and, and I said, okay, cool, but you got to track it so that we know whether you are better than ISA or not. Right. And they, of course, they all felt they, they would be, which they should in theory, because they're realtors and, and they should be able to talk about the area and the home and this and that. Um, so we went to that floor plan and, you know, not really any bumps in the road, but just moving, moving the time. So as of now, um, we're on floor from eight to eight. And the cool thing about, and then we do get Riley after that. But the cool thing about that guys is that like, I can walk out on the sales floor right now, even though it's kind of in shambles because we just moved and there's six people around the conference table hanging out together. Two are on leads. The other ones are going to be on leads later. So they're spending a lot more time in the office and I don't know about you guys, but the idea of working from home, I think is a, is, is tough, right? I mean, I know you lock yourself in the room, um, but it, it's just difficult. And, and I think the collaboration of the agents amongst each other, super, super important. They're learning so much every day. I mean, I can come sit in your office and listen to you on a phone call and learn and vice versa. And so they're doing that all day. And I think that's huge. And so, so far, and we don't have the numbers yet because it's too soon. I mean, we just flipped this at the first of the year. Um, and again, even though it's March, it's still 20 degrees out now and it's supposed to snow today. But when those floodgates open, then that's going to give us a good parameter on, on how well we're doing in that. Yep. Love it. So, so there's kind of two different components to this, right? Because you talked about if a lead calls off a of Zillow, that just yeah. blasts and it goes to everybody on the team and whoever picks it up first wins. So with that being said, look, what system do you use when that number comes in to then blast all those agents? Well, Zillow, so Zillow does that right through Zillow automatically. You could put it on, I could select to send it to one person and, and backing up, I'm, I was incorrect in saying that because now that we switched to the floor, the two agents that are on are the two that receive those calls. Okay. And the beauty is I take this one and the next time it rings, I throw it to you. So they get a very even spread there. Um, but Boomtown is the one that then deciphers where those leads go. And we can simply go in there and click, you know, these, these two agents because they're on floor and now a lead funnels in from Zillow to Boomtown into my phone or the agent's phone that's on floor. So Boomtown deciphers all of that and they do that with Facebook and whatever lead sources we want to do it with. Yep. So then, okay. So you have two agents on floor all the time. Just now if somebody's yeah. listening, they don't get the volume that you are. Maybe it's one agent, you know, right. Um, mm -hmm. But because you have, you know, I don't know, I'm guessing let's just say 50 leads a day coming in or whatever. Um, you have enough to, for those two agents to handle. So do you have it rotated like these two agents are on floor from eight to two and then two yep. more like uh, two to eight? Yep. That is, uh, hold on. I'm going to find out because I don't know for sure. So this is, uh, this is what you always want to be able to get to this level where you can get those answers because you don't have to have them. It's like, it's like the lights. I don't need to know why they work. I just need to be able to flip the switch. Right. Um, and I think that's one of the things, I don't know, for me, people, I don't think about a lot of monotonous stuff. I'm very focused on what I'm thinking about. You know, people talk about the weather. I don't give a shit about the weather. It is what it is. Uh, I'm going to drive through the day no matter what. Um, so I, I don't need these things on my mind. And I would implore the listeners, right, get this stuff off your plate as long as it's the right person. And that goes back to, you know, finding the right person, finding what they're great at, and let them dive deep on that. And they don't need to do anything else. Um, I think we rotate three shifts. If I can spell schedule, it'd be a lot easier. So then as right. you're looking that up. I'll um, get that. Yeah, as you're looking that up, and, and I guess, it, I mean, you, people can make eight, up their own eight, shifts. Eight to noon, noon to three, three to eight. Yep. Okay, Something perfect. along those lines. Then 
how do, how do you QC it from there? Because if these are going to them, like what is that process like of, do you jump into their Boomtown account manually to make sure they're updating the notes or you know, like, what does that look like? Yeah, I mean, I think that, you know, the original action is always the most important. Um, and as I said earlier, I think that's where we fail a little bit is in that long term because, you know, I mean, there's a shitload of, of, of just, I mean, we just talked Zillow alone in Boomtown. There's a ton of them. And so we, um, Tony Tone, which is a, a brother of mine that works with us, we just transferred him to sales uh, manager um, just literally the day we announced we were coming here. And so, yes, he's starting to check that. But what we're asking them to do is Google Doc Sheets. What are the leads you got? What was the lead source? What was the result? And then, you know, th that is going to allow us what, to track, you know, moving forward, whether this model is really working or not. Um, but I would say, you know, our, our one to five days good. Our five to infinity is, is, is weak. And so that's another example of, you know, we're celebrating 9% and it's like, yeah, well, dude, we've got a guy on our team. Okay. His Zillow conversion. So we track each agent individually also. And I think this is important because it allows you to coach them based on, I mean, if you're no good on Zillow, then how do we coach you? Because we've got one guy at 18%, bro. Damn. And then we got a guy at three. Well, how does that make sense? Right? Because one is, is one's either better on the phone or making contact quicker or making more of a personal connection or doing better follow-up. But I know there's so much more money left on the table in our follow-up. And I don't know the system for that other than American, you know, just beating the phones to death. But you know, you, these guys are still out showing homes all day too. So it, 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 I don't know. I think there's a, I think there's a little bit of a, I think we have to be careful of having too many leads. Yep. Yeah, hundred percent. I, I had, uh, I don't know if you know Dirk Zeller, but he's a, you know, top phone coach in real estate. And I was coaching with him for, my team did for exclusive about a year. And, and he, the analogy he gave it to me is if you give an agent too many leads, right? It's like, it's the difference is if you give them the right amount, it's like, okay, here's a piece of cake and here's a cup of coffee. They're going to eat it. It's going to feel good, taste good, whatever. Compared to if you give them too much, it's like, here's the cake. Here's a right. pot of coffee. Go. And it's overwhelming. You bloat. You know, right? So it is finding that that balance. And, and what I love about this too is when you're tracking your people is like, we don't have to have all the answers, but it's like, hey, if this guy's at 18%, let's just find out exactly what he's doing, record his calls, and that becomes a new protocol. You know, right? Uh, I mean, that's the beauty of it. And, you know, going back to the whole coaching thing, this is the stuff that I needed to learn because I didn't, I, I didn't think about tracking anything. I just knew I, we were making a lot of money, you know, and, and that was awesome, serving a lot of people but I didn't understand the mechanics of it and actually getting into coaching the first year kind of set me back a little bit, yeah. you know, um, because you start to, you start to, well, you're building the foundation back up, you know, and now we're at a point where we can just kind of just hit go. And I think we're going to, I really think that we're going to next, next year when we do this, we're going to be 50 people on this team. I really believe that. Yeah, love it. So then yeah, that Google Doc that everybody's got to fill out, hey, here's the lead's name, you know, here, here was the result. Um, is that mandated to be updated before they leave floor? Yes. Um, and so it's funny you ask that because uh, Tony just went with me. I had a couple of listing appointments this morning and I don't like to drive because I'm on this damn phone all the time, right? Um, so I'm like, Tony, let's roll. And he, as I said, he's taken over the sales manager. So we've had, you know, we had this conversation that, you know, he's in the mode right now and he's only been doing it a weekend. We just moved, you know, 30 people and 20 cubicles and all this stuff, but um, of reminding people. And so we were talking about that and I said, that's awesome. And people love Tony. They'll run through a wall for Tony. I said, now we have to get to a point of, you know, what is the, because what's happening is they're, they're not doing it. They're forgetting you know, um, and then they're updating it the next day, which means, you know, it's not getting done as accurate as if they did it in the moment. And so, you know, we just had that conversation of, okay, it's starting time to time to meet with them and talk with them. And now, now we go off leads if we're not tracking it. Yep. Yeah. I love that. And, and it, you know, you got, it's, it's pain and, you know, pain and pleasure, right? Like yeah. the pleasures are getting the leads, but you got to have those painful consequences if they don't like, Hey man, mm -hmm. you don't follow the system. You're cut off leads for the next week or whatever it may be to, to create that. And yeah. next question, I get this all the time of, all right, let's just say you got 20 agents that choose to be on floor. 
but you might have this guy over here, this girl over here that was closing eight deals a month, high conversion ratios, this person over here that's closing two, not as committed. <laughs> I, I, I already know where you're going. I but the it. people feel the pressure of like, oh man, I got to make it even, you know, right? Um, which no, man. I mean, I'm a big believer. Look, back to athlete, uh, athletics, right? Fair and even are not the same. Fair and equal are not the same. Um, and so I, you can't take like Todd that did 68 deals and say, well, you have to do floor time. He doesn't need to. He's already established that business, right? He's got, you know, he's still getting um, leads and he has all of the people that he's already closed in the past that, you know, because he did a good job, they're coming back to him. He doesn't even want to take them because he'd be taking from the people that need them. And so I just believe that fair and equal are not the same, you know, and, and I, and I relate that to sports. I mean, if you're at a, I mean, does Tom Brady, um, when his, when his elbow's broken, you know, I don't know, broken, whatever, but you know, when, it, when his knee's hurting, does he need to, to, to play full contact practice that week? Or do you think he just goes and throws a football and chills out? Now the third string, if he's hurt, if his legs fall in off, he's got to keep going. And that's what I related to. Yeah. I always think about this. Like I, I played football when I was young, that was my sport. I was a quarterback, loved it. And then I quit growing and that had its uh, obstacles, but I always liked in football, the depth chart, you are the best, you are the worst, figure it out. Yep. And that, you know, I don't know. I've just always liked that idea. It doesn't go over great, but I think that if you have the right mindset, people like I, if I was at the bottom, I remember that never again, you know, and I, and I don't know, that's a different mentality, I think too. No, I, I love it, dude, because it's one of these things where like when you say fair and equal, not being the same thing of, okay, here, here's the best, here's the worst, and maybe you're not the worst, Right. Well, hey, you've got the opportunity to get up here and be the best. And here's exactly what you want it, need to do. We'll support you. We'll coach you. We'll train you. We'll give you everything that you need to do. You prove and do the work and get the results. Then, bam, you get up here. So yeah. it is, you know, it's fair on that. Everybody's got the same access to the same tools, platform, tools, training yeah. capabilities. It's how committed are you? Right. And, and the best way. No doubt. No doubt. And that's, I mean, commitment is a big word. You know, it's interesting to me because I think like, you no, know, I believe wholeheartedly. And this is not, and look, we, we don't, we don't want to find the ones at the bottom because we want to get rid of them. We want to be able to coach them up, but we also have to be able to make a business decision after we've done all of the coaching and they're still not selling that, you know, because I don't want someone to, to, to be in here and, and, and not make money. Like my, you know, for me, whether somebody comes or goes, it really doesn't change our bottom line. Um, when, when we change their lives, that's inspiring. That that's, that's what it's all about. You know, when I can take uh, Jake, who's a 26 year old kid on our team and I met him waiting tables and he's going to make 120 grand this year. I mean, that's what it's all about, right? That's how you build stuff. Um, but, but we're not trying to get them here so we can get rid of them. But at the same time, uh, at some point you have to figure out if this is the right path because if it's not, I don't want you to sit here and drown, you know? Yeah. So I mean, I, I think that the biggest thing, like for me, just being the podcast host, I, I hope those of you watching and listening are really paying attention to of, all right, John had this, this lead source. They're thinking about dropping. They were getting shitty results. And originally they were blaming the lead source, but then he chose to take full responsibility, yeah. develop this system, perfect this system, track the system. And now, I mean, I don't, I don't know. I'm going to say this. I mean, it, I could be wrong, but I'm going to guess – has some of the best lead conversion ratios of any real estate agent or team on the planet, you know, right? So, but see, it was, it was the same opportunities coming in. You just perfected the system or, 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 or improved it as the best they possibly can. We'll continue doing so. And yeah, you got to always keep doing it. You know, yeah. it's like all the time. I get, you know, you know, my favorite things, open houses, right? I get all the time. Yeah. Like, open houses don't work in my area or, I'm like, dude, shut the fuck up. Like, yeah, you know why they don't work? Because your ass showed up at 12.50 and put a sign in the yard and then went in there and watched the <laughs> fucking football game. That's yep. why they don't work. Yep. Our open houses are great for us. I mean, we crush open houses. Yep. Love them. I mean, we don't go all you know to the extreme you do. Um, and and I, I'd like to. I think I think it'd be super impactful. We're listing, you know, as we move forward into spring, we're going to be listing between 8 and 15 homes every week hard to put that on with that many homes every week. I mean, we barely have enough people to sit in every home, but we, I love open houses. I mean, I think it's such a great opportunity for the seller. I mean, truly like besides the fact that yes, it produces leads for us. We sell homes at the open houses. Yeah. You know, when, when you, when you can put on an event like you're doing and a true buyer shows up and there's 50 other people, that sucker's leaving with a lump in his throat. 
because there that creates a sense of urgency. And I think that's huge. Yep. Yep. Love it, dude. All right, man. So you know, we, we've kind of uh, dropped hints about what happened last 48 hours, but 40 hours ago, your world was uh, kind of, kind of flipped upside down um, and, and, and you're dropped on your head and it wasn't something that like was intentional. Like you, you walk in the office, you had no idea. And then bam, you deliver this news and kind of, kind yeah. of walk us through what happened and what this transition has been like. And, and let's just, I'll, kinda... I'll, I'm, I'm, I'm plain as day, clear as water. Like I'm very transparent in everything that I do because I'm always telling the truth. I'm always coming from a place of the truth. So it doesn't, it's not like I ever have to think about this stuff. I, you know, I initially used the word I got fired. My wife said, you shouldn't say that because people are going to think you did something wrong. I'm like, well, but I didn't. I know, but people are going to think you did, right? Yeah. And so really what I, I think the truth is, um, and I don't know the truth. I didn't, I mean, here's the thing about me, right? When I said I don't clear my, I don't, I don't fill my mind with bullshit. I didn't even ask them why, because I don't give a shit. You made your mind up, oh, I care why. I just need to get busy, right? And so, um, you know, I, I think it was a, an internal thing when it came to other areas of the business, title work. And uh, so this was last Monday. It was, was the 48 hours that I talked about was how much we got done in those 48 hours. But last, last Monday, you know, about 1030, my manager walks in and says, you know, I'm giving you your 48 hour notice. And uh, in my mind, I'm thinking, okay, great. Now get out of my office so I can get busy. And, but that was a shock. Like, and, and again, this goes back to, I'm a big believer. Like, you know, everything that we do in our lives, this goes back to that journey, right? This, the stuff that I endured in my childhood, allowed me to go through, I mean, it was nothing. It was water off my back. I mean, you're going to compare this to me finding, you know, my mother hanging in the basement. I mean, this is nothing. Right. And so, you know, when, when that happened, I just, the first thing I did was I called my wife and uh, my wife is, uh, you know, like I said, she was a school teacher, you know, and, and we've been blessed enough. She doesn't work now, but you know, she likes to know when do I go to work? How much do I get paid? And when do I go home? That's just her, that's her safety zone, you know? Um, and so I needed to really be aware of, you know, how this was going to affect her. And uh, because I knew her so well, I just called her. I said, are you home? And she said, yes. I'm like, okay, that's, this is going to be much better than at, at, uh, at school, right? Because I needed to tell her right away because I, I sent out a Slack uh, to our team to do a, uh, and then here's the other thing, guys, like, the words you choose, the things you say, the little minute things, how you think about what you do before you do them. Most people would have sent out emergency <laughs> meeting. Bless you. Thank you. Most people would have sent out emergency meeting at noon, which sends panic and fear, right? I just said, hey, awesome opportunity. Going to be a great meeting. Sales floor at noon. And uh, anyway, I go home and I tell my wife and I walk in and she's, you know, she just got out of the shower and she says, what's up? Is everything okay? Because she could tell in my voice something was bad. And I said, you know, uh, I just got released basically from, from Remax. And she said, are we going to be okay? And I said, you're fucking right. We're going to be, we're going to be totally okay. Uh, but I need you to get dressed and come with me to the office. And I need you on my arm when I share this with the team. And uh, so we head up and there's about 25, 26 of the team on the floor and they have no idea what's coming. And, uh, and prior to that, I met with, you know, the, the, I would say the three, the two top producers and uh, operations manager, and I, I told them what happened. Um, and, and, and they all said right away, let's just go independent. We don't want to do anything else. Let's just go independent. We, we can do that, no problem. So we went out to the sales floor. All the staff is there. Everybody's there. And, and here's the thing, what, you know, what just, you know, you give somebody 48 hours, right? which means essentially you don't have a broker's license or you don't have the ability to operate. Right. And okay. So you have some animosity towards me. What? Well, that's fine. But do you think about the other 25 and then do you think about their spouses and their kids and their horses and dogs and cats? Like, you know, I could never do that to somebody, but that goes back to operating your business from your heart or by based on, on solely numbers and what's best for you. And obviously we know where that, where that person operates from. Um, but, you know, I stood there with my wife and, um, and I shared this with everybody, you know, here's what's occurred. Here's what the plan is. Um, I need you guys to stay very ultra focused because there's going to be a lot of noise coming. I just need you to trust me. And man, they, they embraced it. They were cheering. They're like, yeah, this is going to be awesome. That's what we want to do. Um, we got your back. We trust you. You know, you start to hear all of those things. And when my wife heard those things, 
All right. And see, this is, this is why it was so important for her to be there. Um, and now if I'd have went on that floor and been, you know, ho-hum, well, I don't know what we're going to do, then everybody would have been that way. But right away, we had a plan, plan of action, and we took action. And I think that's the big thing. You've got to take action. So within that first 48 hours, you know, we unveiled this. Um, one of the gals, actually two people on my team were brokers, and I've shared this with, with Josh before. If you are building a team and you are under a brand and you don't have your broker's license, that's fine. Make sure someone on your team does because that's what, that's what really helped us. Um, we were up and running within 48 hours, went worth real sellers and got to call everybody that's under contract, um, you know, and do all of those things. And that, you know, that was, that was a lot of work, but the team, and here's the other thing is I'm a micromanager a little bit because I've done it all. Like every spot, you know, that is in this company, I've done it. And in this moment I couldn't micromanage. There's no time. I had to go find a building. Like I just said, clear my calendar for the entire week unless it's a money making activity, right? And clear everything else. And so we took out money making activities and then anything to do with my family. Like I drive my kids to school every day, not changing that. I go to school mass every Wednesday, not changing that. Uh, we have team meeting on Tuesday. We're not changing those things, but I didn't need to be there for them. All right. And, and I just started going and figuring everything out. And uh, you know, now here we are in this amazing building. It's 20 times better than where we were. And we moved the entire team basically in one day because everyone bought in. You know, and, and one of the guys on the team posted today, um, best leader. I've, and this guy played division, division one football for Tennessee, right? High level athlete for five years. And, uh, you know, he posted today, best leader I've ever had. That says a lot from a guy in that position because I'm out there moving the shit with him, you know? And uh, so it's been a whirlwind, but we've always kind of had that, that mindset of this is what we could do. And because the team is so strong, and so I don't, I don't, you know, one of the guys on our team, the same guy that, you know, terminated us, went to one of the guys on our team, offered him 100% commission for life, um, and, and he had just had to take on a small managerial role. He said no. Offered another guy six months, 100%. And he said no. And so, you know, if I led this team with our, by numbers, half of these guys would be gone. And, and you know, because I'm here, because I'm so in, in, in drenched and ingrained in it, and I lead with my heart, they rallied, man. And it was huge to see. And I think that it's made us even stronger. And I love the fact that now we've got the latitude, I believe, and you know this, being an independent, I think we've got the latitude to service our clients at a very much higher level um, because we're not handcuffed by the way you should do it, right? We're able to adapt in the moment and do what we believe is best uh, for the customer first and foremost. And that's the other thing about going independent. I never wanted it to be about uh, John Wentworth. It's just become the brand, you know? And, and I know that that probably hurts us a little bit on recruiting because I'm not going to put my name under his. And I, I just always say to people like, why are you so worried about that? You got your name under somebody else's. Um, so it's been unbelievable. It's uh, we're up and rocking. I mean, we did not miss a beat. We've got 13 homes under contract since that happened. So, you know, just, just keep just rocking and, and rolling nonstop. Yeah. Love it, dude. So, you know, one thing I'm always preaching to agents is, yeah, because, okay, we, we get into business. We, we, we think we're business owners, we're independent contractors, but you always have in this business, you always have an element of lack of control, right? With your broker and different things. And like the severe could happen, just like happened to you, you know, right? Like there's always that element that's, kind of, that's scary, but Right. Hopefully the best plan for the worst, right? Like hopefully that never happens, but I'm always telling agents, uh, you know, a few things, right? Number one, always own your own website, your own database. Now a lot yes. of these broker owners are out there giving you free boomtown accounts, commissions, but I'm like, dude, they own all your data. Never allow that to happen. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, own your own, own website, your own uh, CRM database, all your own URLs. I, I've got a buddy that's a lender, right? And, and the bank he works at owns his website. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I mean, that's a great, that's great advice, Joshua. I mean, yeah. that's so huge. Yeah. Well, and things like your phone numbers, your faxes, right? So like if that switch is flipped, all you got to do is swap Find out your different sell signs and, and get yeah. your sellers to sign up for leases. Um, but that's the only way to allow yourself not to be vulnerable. And now that you went through this experience, man, I mean, maybe elaborate on some of those importance because really yeah. all you got to do was find an office space, Right. And then, and then of course, yeah. you know, get you the team and get the buy-in and whatever. Yeah. But then it was like, dude, business is, is usual. 13 deals under contract. 
Well, and, and we'd always marketed. Uh, so my cell phone number was the number that we always marketed. And, you know, uh, two years ago I had to get a new number because we we're getting 150 calls a day on the damn thing. Um, but we always marketed that number, not the, not the Remax number. And we always marketed John Wentworth group. Um, and so truly you just, as, as you said, flip a switch. Now there's all those other things that you don't think about, but I think it's huge to CRM. Like, you know, we, we do use Boomtown and essentially we don't own it. Boomtown does, but the brokerage didn't provide it. Like that's one thing I got to say, like I never wanted anything from anyone else because when you take from other people, there's that element of they, they think you owe. Right. And I never wanted to be attached to that. And so I almost did that without even really thinking about it. Um, but you know, the, the other things like the, the, the staff, their office lines. Well, now I know people are calling those office lines. And so, you know, we, we, we will deal with that and we'll work through that, but that's something we could have done better. I think the other thing is that, you know, very simply, how about this? And this just takes care of everything else. When you're presented with the contract and you read the damn thing and it says you have 40 hours, either party can terminate at 48 hours. You say, how about we make that two weeks? Right. And then it solves everything else, but it doesn't solve if, you, if they own all your shit. Yeah. Right. It does not solve that, but it solves the phone. It solves all of that. And, uh, and I just keep saying like, you know, in this market, in this day and age, you've got to be branding yourself. You've got to be building your own brand. And even the agents on my team, right. I'm, I'm telling them, build your brand, build your brand, build your brand. You know, it, because I think that it matters. And I think that if the team is cohesive enough and the, and the value is, look, there's never been enough money. I mean, think about marriages, right? There's never been enough money to keep a relationship together. So yeah. it isn't always about the splits. It's about the environment. It's about what, what is, what is the, I always feel like I want to take the monotony out of people's lives. Um, but we just had a guy join the other day and, you know, we're always thinking as, as leaders, leads, how to give them leads, get them leads, get them leads. They want leads. This guy, this dude, I had him in my office. I'm like, what's up, man? I, you know, what made, what made the switch? He said, I, it gave me peace. I was like, man, the hair stood up on my arms. Like, wow, I didn't even think about that. Um, and that's huge. And that's, you know, when, when we can offer that. Look, if I moved to Nevada, I would be on a team. Yeah. I wouldn't even, I would just, I could just, I could flip the switch. I could just go start selling. Oh, you're going to give me all these leads? Holy cow, this is game on, super easy stuff. So, you know, it's interesting because I think the brokerage model is broken and not all of them, obviously. But I think the mindset of, you know, just hire anybody with the pulse, put them in a pretty office, and then watch them fail. And I just think that's, you know, it's tough, man. So many good people come in with good intentions in real estate, and they get nothing. They get no mentor, no coaching, no, no anything. I mean, especially now, right? Because real estate's easy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Love it, man. Couldn't agree more, dude. So then, as far as you, as far as leading your team and developing this amazing culture that you developed because you know, the reality is dude, I mean, you're out there selling a hundred plus homes a year, you know, we're still personally active in the yeah. business, which is a full-time yeah. job in its own. You've got your family that you, you don't neglect, but then you've got these, you know, 27 other people that you got to show up and lead. But if they're like, Oh, John, you got a minute every second of the day, I could be so easy to allow them to consume all your time where you couldn't right. do anything else. And I see a lot of team leaders go to that where, where all that gets sucked in and they just crumble. So like, how do yeah. you, how, how do you structure it? You know, create that balance, if you will, where you can be productive, focus on money-making activities, go out there, sell those homes, take care of your family the way that you do, right. but also show up and lead your people. Right. Cause I'm sure you gotta be very methodical about that. Well, I, I think for me, one of the things is that, you know, the, the team kind of, I don't want to say polices, but you know, they, they, they help each other. And I, I like, I like the idea of a very open concept, sales floor um, because I could just roll over and, and get advice from a senior agent uh, and all of our agents because that team is collaborating so much they're so happy and willing to share um, but it still gets tough you know I, I said the other day I'm like shit somebody can have this office I got to start working from home uh, but I would never get anything done um, but, but so really you know I, I, I think people because I think the tough part in that is we don't want to say no because we don't want them to think we don't care Right. And so for me, I, as I, as I said, I come in, I give everybody a hug and I go in my office, I shut the door, there's a little sticker on it and I get busy and then I'll take breaks and I'll go out and walk around and you know, what's going on? How's everybody they shoot the shit with them for a little bit? And then I'll go back to, to working. Um, you know, 
you you rock the, the panda planner and I tried that it just my mind doesn't work that way like I after I had to write one sentence I was done I just my mind doesn't work that way and I think that's really important too is to understand who we are and you know and Gary V says this all the time and I don't want to piggyback off that but it's just so true and I found it resonate with me like I'm not good at so much like literally I I can't even read a freaking book my mindset like I could read the damn thing and I don't remember anything that I read I just don't retain information that way. I simply retain by doing. And if I scripted, like I did a, a, a talk at the local church, you know, kind of shared a little bit of my, my journey. And uh, if someone said, are you nervous? I go, no. If I prepared for it, I'd be nervous. I just operate best in the moment. And so I think you just got to learn yourself and understand yourself and then truly, you know, dive deeper on your strengths and let somebody else deal with your weaknesses. But also to answer your question, you know, we've got a sales manager. Uh, we've got Todd, who is who essentially have two sales managers, and and they help those guys with all of that. So you know, I think there's a little bit of give and take with it. You, you've got to be available to them for for our environment, right? Now that's the thing. Everybody's got and created. And I think that this is it. Whatever, however you hire them, the environment that they come into, that's just what they're going to the environment that they're going to expect. And so if that environment isn't that way, it's okay if they came into that that way. Yep. Yep. Love it. And couldn't agree more. And it's, yeah, it's, um, you know, it's something that, because I've detached myself from the business about two years ago and it's something, right. that, you know, we continue, you know, and it's probably more of a limiting belief, you know, right. But it's one of those things that we struggle with is, you know, cause, it, <clears throat> but a, you hit the nail on the head of a lot of people that struggle of, well, we want more Josh. Well, unfortunately I can't give you more of me and the team, you know, right. Even though right. all this, everything is laid out the same, but those were the agents that were used to this old way you know, right. And, yeah. but new agents do, they don't know any different. It's, it's just the right. front system and it's how it operates yeah. and how it goes. Yeah. How you hire them is what they expect. And I think, you know, if, if there's a big change in that, then they're like, huh, where did, where did you go? You yeah. know? Yeah. Love it, dude. So if the John today, knowing everything that you know now could go back to the John when you first started this journey and, and when you first entered real estate and give yourself two pieces of advice, Knowing again, everything you know now that you feel would have just fast forward this trajectory to success, what would those two pieces of advice look like? That's a great question. You know, I, I thought you were going to go a different way with it. And so I'm, I'm, you know, I keep going back to my childhood, right? I mean, you know, I endured a very crazy childhood, um, you know, um, with, with, with my mother, essentially, the things that she did. And then my dad never recovered from that. So he became abusive alcoholic and told me all of my life, you'll never amount to shit. And in a very strange way, it ended up motivating me. It suppressed me for a while. And then it was like, okay, watch, right? And, and so I don't ever want to change the journey that I had. As crazy as it was, I wouldn't be standing right here in this moment right now if anything were changed along that journey. So when we talk about advice, I would say, you know, first, you, you got you to gotta, you gotta be an action taker. And, and I think that people get too cluttered with, I like examples, right? So here's an example where we sent out um, an email the other day to about 70 agents in the market, a recruiting email. It was very raw and real. Here's what's happening. Um, and this is a, re before it was a soft play, this is a recruiting email, right? And then I transferred them all to Todd so that Todd could call them all. And he said, yeah, I didn't call him because, and Todd, I love you. Um, you know, and, and Todd knows that Todd will let me coach him and, 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 and he, and he coaches me. He told me the other day, he said, you're swearing a little bit too much, John, dial it in. Um, but I just get going, man. But, you know, he said, he said, I didn't call because that email, that automatic email went out. I messed it up. And, you know, I, that was so stupid. I said, who gives a shit about that? You're, you're going to not call. That's an even more reason to call. I'm sorry I sent you that dumbass email. I didn't mean to. Right. But we have this mindset of what everybody else thinks we react into how we think someone else is going to think which is silly I, you know I don't I never understand that um, and so I would just say don't act stop thinking act yeah you want to plan something out but at the same time you know analysis paralysis right people analyze so much that they don't do anything and I'm just simply saying for one piece of advice is do shit be act take action you're not going to get anywhere sitting and thinking about you could look, you could create the most amazing plan in the world. It doesn't mean jack shit if you don't put it in action. You know, it's like I always say you could be the best realtor in the world, but if you don't have anybody to sell to, then you suck. 
and vice versa. You could be the worst realtor in the world and sell stuff if you have enough people to sell to. And so take action would be one. Uh, and I think the other one, um, you know, I could go probably to a few now that I've thought of things, um, but would be, you got to lead with integrity, man. You got to lead with integrity. You, you, you screw one person and it will start, to, it'll start to start to sting a little bit. You start to screw two, three, four, man, it's a small world, right? I mean, look, Josh and I, both from Michigan, met in LA. It's a small world. You've got to do business with the utmost integrity. And I see so many people that they're chasing one deal so hard, they'll do anything to get that one deal done that it costs them 20. Um, and so, you know, when I, I, I mean, there I was flat ass broke, but I still wasn't willing to do something for the now money. And, and that leads to, you know, you've got to be in this business for, for the right reasons. And, you know, it's all about the, the people. Yeah, and I think in anything in life, you know, that goes back to, yeah, we want to make money, right? We want to be successful. We want to provide for our families. We want to buy a vacation home in Michigan. Um, but if, if that's all there is, you know, I mean, then, then that's all there is. And that's kind of for me for this journey. Yeah, I could, I could cut this team in half and make way more money, literally, right? But when the journey is over, how many lives am I affecting? And that's really what motivates me, you know, and I, and I think, Again, that all goes back to my childhood. You know, I was suppressed for so long. I want to be the opposite and be the person to lift people up. You know, and that's, I guess that's where, you know, that compassion for people comes from. Yeah, man, I, I love it, dude. I mean, it's one of these things where, yeah, you got to make some money. You know, one, one of my mentors and, and, and personal coaches, Alex Sharfin, he, he says that there's a minimum amount of money that you must make to experience, you know, to allow yourself to experience happiness. Now, if you can't provide the, the necessities in life, then yeah, it's tough to really go out there and enjoy life. But right. once you get beyond that, the money itself isn't going to, to create that happiness. And that's where creating that fulfillment path and fulfillment plan, like you've talked about, becomes so critical, man, that, that impact. Yeah. And, you know, and Tony Robbins talks about all the time, have a financial successful plan, have a fulfillment plan without both, you're never going to achieve true success. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I love that and, and for, for me, I thought I was doing so well, you know, and then a buddy of mine says, you should go to this um, retreat this weekend at our church. I'm, I don't go to church. Right. And I'm like, yeah, that'd probably be good business. You know, there's probably a lot of people there to me. And I got to tell you, I was floored. I mean, I cried the entire time. And, and, and inside of that, I realized, and so maybe this is a little bit of advice too. Um, no matter how good you think you're doing, there's always somebody coming. Right. And, and you've, you've got to always be evolving. And so that was a really a big eye opener to, to, I was still doing business really well. But I realized I had to get my life a lot better. You know, like I left there and realized how much I was neglecting my family. And, you know, and, and it wasn't about the, just the religious aspect of it. I was highly impacted with that as well. But it taught me that there's so much more to life than just working. And meanwhile, I work my ass off all day and night still, but you know, I go to the gym at six instead of eight. I drive my kids to school now every day. When work is over, I go home instead of the bar. And, 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 and so I just think that I, I, this is it. This is the best advice. I really believe this. If you do not live in a place of self-reflection, you will, you will not succeed at the level you're capable of. If you can't have somebody call you out on your shit, because it hurts your feelings, you will not succeed at the level you're capable of. And if you're not willing to look in the mirror and say, I fucked up, you will not succeed at the level you're capable of. And so that's it. Be self-reflective all the time. Um, I, I just think that's the most important thing we can do in our lives. I wake up every day and I try to be better and then I fail, right? I'm human and I get that. And then I go to bed and I pray and I wake up the next day and I try to be better, you know, and, and, and I just, to me, that's huge. That, that uh, it gives you peace. Uh, and, and also understanding that uh, we, we don't have to be in control. Yeah. Right? We don't have to be in control of every single thing because, man, that'll drive you crazy. Uh, it's actually, um, it's, it's a better, better place to be surrendered. Yeah. You know, I mean, it just is. And so, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm blessed beyond measure, but I still have so much more to do. And, uh, and, and I've got so much more to do for others. It's not about if I make X or Y, that's not going to change my life. Right now, if I make X and Y 50 times over, it will, but it's also going to change a ton of other people's lives too. So, 
Yeah, love it, dude, love it. So, you know, you talked earlier about a podcast that you just started and those that are watching and listening to this, maybe they want to, you know, follow you, check out your podcast. Um, where's the best place, Sean, to, to do all of those things? I'm going to have to text somebody else to get that answer, but it, it's thoroughbredpodcast.com. Um, the interesting concept is I have thoroughbreds, you know, from my, from my racing history, got back into horses, love it with a, uh, you know, it's a, it's an amazing sport. It's, it's, there's, there's not enough time to talk about why it's so amazing, but you know, a horse can carry a thousand people on its back, right? When you're involved in that. And, and uh, so thoroughbred really, when you, you know, you think about horse, but really the definition, the secondary definition of a thoroughbred is an elite business person. Uh, and so that's kind of where we came up with the name. Uh, shout out to Chris Bear, our video guy that came up with that. But so thoroughbredpodcast.com. Uh, it's also on some cloud thing and iTunes. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so, yeah, definitely. Love it, badass. And those that are watching this, we'll make it easy for you. The links will be right below so you can go check that out. And, um, you know, guys, I know I end every podcast with this, but information without implementation is truly just a sort of delusion. Information isn't power. It's taking that information and taking massive action, which you heard John say many, many times, just get shit done, right? Which is the name of the podcast, right? Like, go out there, take action. And John shared so many amazing piece of advice with you guys that takes something that you learn, start taking immediate action on so you can go out there and create the life you truly know you want and deserve. And John, man, I know you got so much on your plate right now, more than probably even usual. Uh, <laughs> I love so it, man. You took time out of your busy day to be here. It's been a massive honor, brother. Uh, I love you, man. I appreciate you greatly. God bless you. Thank you so very much. I appreciate it immensely. I've been jacked since the moment I met you. And uh, so we'll be riding some waves in Michigan probably this summer. Yep. Hell yeah. 100% my friend. All right, guys. Thanks again for watching. Listen, we'll see you next time. Peace out.